Hello, everyone. I'm Kat Timpf, along with Ebony K. Williams and Eric Bowling. We are the Fox News Specialists. Some major developments today over Donald Trump Jr. and questions of election meddling by Russia. Donald Trump Jr. released the email chain with his plans for a meeting with a Russian lawyer last year. That lawyer allegedly has connections to the Kremlin. The emails between Trump Jr. and the British publicist Rob Goldstone, who acted as a middleman for the meeting, shown in part Goldstone appearing to offer incriminating information about Hillary Clinton as, quote, part of Russia and its government support for Mr. Trump. Trump Jr. later replying, seems we have some time, and if it's what you say, I love it, especially later in the summer. This afternoon, the White House responded to the news and also read a written statement from President Trump. I have a quick uh, statement that I'll read from the president. Um, my son is a high, high quality person and I applaud his transparency. And beyond that, uh, I'm going to have to refer everything on this matter to John Jr.'s counsel and outside counsel and won't have anything else to add beyond that today. And earlier today in an interview with NBC News, the Russian lawyer at the center of this denied working for the Russian government or having any links to it at all. They had the impression, it appears, that they were going to be told some information that you had about the DNC. How did they get that impression? It's quite possible that maybe they were looking for such information. They wanted it so badly. Have you ever worked for the Russian government? Uh, do you have connections to the Russian government? No. Eric, yet. <laughs> the email, though, said that she was connection, connected to the Russian ooh, government. Ooh, scary email here. Trump it is kind of a scary email. No, I think that's actually, fair. I think this is actually, uh, I said yesterday, it's an insult to nothing. Burgers now double down on that, knowing what we know today, going even further, knowing that we know so much more. Trump derangement syndrome out in force today, all day long. Donald Trump Jr. broke no laws likely broke no ethics, uh, uh, election ethics rules. If you have a problem with what Russia is doing uh, with regards to our elections, then you have a problem with what, with what uh, Barack Obama did to stop them from doing it. He never, apparently, never stopped any of this from happening. Very quickly, take a look at what I think is the epitome of Trump derangement syndrome happening today. Look at this full screen that CNN Money put out. Trump Jr. emails trigger knee-jerk drop in stock market. Now, if that isn't the dumbest headline and the dumbest substance for a story, I don't know what is. Matt Egan, you should have your journalism card pulled for that stupid headline. It makes no sense. I don't know. Ebony, maybe I'm deranged. Ooh. I think <laughs> that this is an important news story to discuss. Why? What's, uh, what's, what's the, other than the left going crazy trying to nail Donald Trump and his admission for anything, what do you, I don't see anything violated. Do you okay. see anything? Ooh, okay, so this is what I will say. This is going to be a lot to unpack because obviously I'm coming from the legal lens specifically. Mm -hmm. And before we jump to conclusions, I want to unpack everything, make sure that we're following the facts. That's really, really important here. We're, we learned more today. We know later this evening on Fox News, Sean Hannity's going to have an interview with Donald Trump Jr. where we will get more facts. Uh, and I'm looking forward to really giving a deep analysis after that when we'll, we go we'll live, live. We'll at, live 11 at 11 p.m. And, and that's <laughs> seriously straight up. Yeah, it'll be great. Very exciting. All right, yeah. well, it's time to meet today's specialists. He's a media reporter, a columnist for The Hill, and a former mediaite columnist. But he specializes in collecting sports memorabilia of fictitious athletes. Joe <laughs> Concha is here. And he's the editorial cartoonist for the Omaha World Herald. His cartoons are syndicated worldwide. He's a lightning strike survivor. And his specialty is encouraging others to be creative by embracing their obstacles. That's beautiful. Jeff Caturba is here. Yes, yes. All right, Joe, I'm going to get you to weigh in on this. I think that this is... A significant thing to discuss because you say no collusion, no collusion. This at the very least shows a potential attempt at collusion or a failed collusion. What's your take on it? What do you think the crime was that was committed here? Did I say that? No, no, I'm saying can you define it? There isn't any. You uh, can't. The, I mean, this is, this is a media hype story on the left. They're, they're blowing it. I heard Adam Schiff today call it, um, what did he say? He said it was uh, uh, unethical. It absolutely is unethical. Right. If, if a foreign, Donald a hostile, Trump Jr. If is who, not, nor was he ever in the government. Manafort How is this unethical? was there, and so was Kushner, and they're CC'd on the email. And they weren't in the government either when this went They're down. campaign officials, and the investigation is about Russian collusion with 
the campaign team. And it was the campaign this team. This woman, and uh, Vassal Nitschkaya, wasn't even part of the Russian uh, administration. She had no, uh, uh, her own here, words. The, her own words. No, Let's trust her. No Great ties idea. to the Russian government. Here's, here's, the, here's the point, though. He was told, Donald Trump Jr. was told that these are Russian government officials. Mm -hmm. And his first thought wasn't, let me call the FBI. It was yay for my daddy. I have a problem with that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I miss the days when the biggest controversy involving one of the Trump's kids was when Ivanka was sitting at the table at the G20. Uh, but no, there's, a, there's, a, there's always been a perception problem in the Trump White House from the very beginning, and they don't do a very good job uh, managing uh, the perception, that the public perception that people have of them. Uh, I do have to say that, uh, you know, Donald uh, Trump Jr. releasing these emails was a, a good show of transparency, something that we haven't had in, you know, we didn't have in the previous administration. I will say maybe. I will say some people, yeah, some people, yeah, some people were saying that there <laughs> he knew the Times was Times sitting on a big story, right? Out. So, but I mean, I think it's good that they got out. Yeah. I don't necessarily know that we know for sure the motivation for releasing them uh, is as pure as some would say. If I were drawing a cartoon about this, I would draw, uh, you know, uh, Donald Trump Jr. finally uttering those three words the Democrats have been waiting for. I love it. <laughs> so, but so was this you, collusion, Eric? That's the question. you meeting, meeting with a lawyer who wants to talk about uh, some sort of human rights and abortion rights going on in Russia versus That's not why adoption. Adoption. Uh, adoption, I'm sorry. Okay, so if you think that would be collusion, even though she says, I have this information that might help your father win uh, an election, you, you think that's collusion or unethical. Can we talk about what Hillary Clinton did when she sold 20% of u uranium supply of the United States to the Russians or when John Podesta had Russian uh, stocks, his family had Russian stocks when he's negotiating some Russian deals or when Bill Clinton went to Russia, spoke to the Russian people, spoke to the Russian government, R uh, RT, is that who? It is? Or Russia R Today. R Russia Today. And then all of a sudden, some corporations and groups are throwing money into the Clinton Foundation. I want to, you want to talk collusion? There's your I collusion. I believe that the Clinton family is at the center of a lot of corruption. But that's not the news of the day. It's not okay. the Clintons So right what's now. corrupt about Trump's. what happened? Tell, explain to me, Ebony, help me out here. What, what went down <laughs> that's illegal? Well, we don't really know yet. Is is the truest answer I can tell you, Eric. And maybe nothing, maybe nothing. But I think it's fair to Kat's point to go through the analysis. That's mm -hmm. all I'm saying. It's just let the facts fall. Let's go through the analysis. Let's define what collusion is, not mm -hmm. just colloquially, right? Because that's what a lot of people are doing. They're using this term collusion, and they're not really meaning the letter of the law collusion. They just mean something improper, something secretive, something it's, confidential. It goes back to that perception goes back to that problem. perception problem. But, but I'm a little less interested in that, Jeffrey. That's fine, and we can talk about that. But I'm really focused on the legal ramifications right. of the legal essence of the collusion statute uh, in dealing with that. There's a big difference between clumsy and collusion. He shouldn't have taken this right. meeting. Everybody can agree on that. It was politically naive. Everybody can agree on that. Donald Trump Jr. is a businessman. He's not a politician. Someone says, I got something on the competition. He thought maybe that was a good idea to take. Let's look at this from a macro level. June 9, 2016, Donald Trump meets with a Russian lawyer who gives him no information on Hillary Clinton. It was a bait and switch. The only other accounts that we have now is Mike Flynn meeting with Kislyak, the Russian ambassador, and Jeff Sessions meeting with Kislyak, the Russian ambassador. The problem with those two meetings were those were after the election. For collusion to happen before an election, we would need some sort of proof for meetings before. And the only thing we have now is Donald Trump meeting with a Russian lawyer who gave him we nothing. We know the Ukrainians met with the Clinton campaign to dish dirt on the Trump administration. Now, is that collusion, too? Or is the mainstream media digging into, into that meeting? Uh, Paul Manafort resigned based on some of the, the accusations that were levied against him. But you said that there was no evidence of any kind of collusion. I think that part of the problem is the fact that Everybody in the Trump administration connected to Trump, involved in the campaign, so there was no meetings with Russia. There was nothing like it. And in this email, hey, we're the Russian government. We want to help you out. I love it. That kind of makes that narrative being, a little, that makes it a not, lot harder not, to trust. Uh, uh, Vassal Nitskaya and uh, the lawyer end up not being one iota connected to the Russian according government, to according to her. what we know right yeah. now well, so far. If that's if we take her word for it. And also, Eric, that's if we, uh, you know, kind of, ignore the denials. I think a lot of what people have an issue with is less about what we actually know or less of an actual smoking gun because I haven't seen a smoking gun yet. We'll see what Donald Trump Jr. says tonight on Sean's show. But 
the denial. I think that people have an issue. That's that perception problem mm -hmm. you're talking about, Jeffrey, where you say, I never met with these people. I never mm -hmm. had any conversation with the Russians. And now we know that part at least is not true. I agree. Do you know I how many government officials on an ongoing basis meet with people who represent the Russian government? Absolutely. Like, almost every single it, U.S. But senator they should just does say it. it. Almost so every single, single U.S. Absolutely. does it as so well. So they should just, just say meeting it. meeting with someone who's associated with the Russian government is not A, illegal, B, unethical, nor is it Collusion. So why deny it, Eric? I just want to know. Well, I, I don't know. What, they have a lot of business in Russia. She she portrayed herself. So would that make mean as a conflict of interest of him as president? I mean, come on. This you can. Do you think this was a bad decision, Eric? Can you at least say all, that he Donald did something Trump wrong here? Donald Trump didn't even know about it until a couple of days Eric, ago. Do you think that Donald Trump Jr. did something wrong here? No. Oh, how can no. you say that? Am I, is this real Nothing. life? Is this real life? How I, can you say he didn't do anything wrong? I will tell you 100% of the time, if someone's offered opposition research against the candidate you're running against, you're going to take you're it. You're going to take it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you might, take I think it, it might have just been sloppy on his part, but I don't, I don't see that he did anything wrong at this you point. You pay for opposition research. You wouldn't tell the FBI, hey, that. The Russia has this information on somebody who was at the top level of our government? Well, if he was that worried about it, he wouldn't have said, yeah, maybe later on this summer we'll get together. I think a lot of it would have been remedied, guys, if he would have taken it, because I'm not mad at him for taking it, Eric. You know, we talked about that yesterday. But again, then when someone says, did you have these meetings, uh, interviews and, and conversations with, with these Russian officials, you say, you know what? We had a, we took a meeting with them. This mm -hmm. was the goal of the meeting. Nothing came of it and done in the story. And it doesn't have the legs that we see it having now. Can I go back to a point that Eric made at the beginning of this segment? Or you pointed out the CNN graphic. If you guys have that in the control room, once again, as far as that knee jerk reaction mm -hmm. leading to the Dow. Going way, way money. down. Yep. Anybody know how the uh, Dow finished it ended today? Up higher. It ended up we in the green. Should we Donald Trump Jr. for <laughs> making the Dow rally today? That is a classic Party example. Egan. Come on. That, a classic example of the media overreacting to a story and then connecting it to the stock market and not following through and at least waiting until 4 o'clock to make such a story. Well, I'm, I'm not, have, I'm not have, saying that We have an attorney here. Let me, let me do this. Yep. Even if Vasilnitskaya was connected to the Russian government, Yep. It's still not illegal what he did, Donald Trump. Well, that's what I was going to say. When we talk about illegal, that doesn't even mean collusion. So some collusion is legal, and, and that's a weird thing, right? So every piece of collusion is not illegal according to the letter of the law, and we'll break that down further when we know more. But, uh, Eric, I think you want me to give a firm answer as to whether it was legal behavior or illegal. And I just, it's just pretty much. I think we can say. But we're, so we're on our 12th uh, accusation of collusion between the Trump administration. Oh, it's stale. I'll give you that. And we That's still stale. haven't found a shred That's of evidence. That's absolutely okay. stale. I'll give so you, you that. This is not evidence of collusion. So by you think any means. that the investigation should be dropped? You think there's nothing there? We have to completely just I think stop it's it. So, big, colossal waste of time and money, the American taxpayer? Yeah, I do. But would you feel that way on the other side? If it was the other side, because I know when the, the Obama this? birth certificate I thing was happening, three when examples. the long-term birth certificate came out, uh, Bill you Clinton, continued to question uh, that one. Hillary, you brought Pamela I, on your show and said, I, is this one Kat, I just gave you three too? examples of deals. Hillary Clinton selling uh, uranium to the Russians. John Podesta's family having uh, Russian stock, uh, uh, tied to Russian stock companies. And uh, 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 three examples of actual deals being done by Clinton. Where's the investigation? Not, not just Clinton, remember. The DNC actually met with Ukrainians officials yes for dirt on donald trump and there was no uproar over that but I, I, I think I, the american public wait, is wait, just saying let's be Joe. consistent are with allowed, our are you outrage are not allowed Joe, to be upset Joe, at politicians from two different parties do you have to like pick one no. i think that as a human i'm allowed to be bothered by I, things no, no, i'm like bothered by the selective outrage no, 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 family has done guys guys wait one second it, let's not have such short memories if we go back which is right before this election i do remember because i was one of the people advocating and i wasn't alone on this network or many others that said there should be an investigation into the clinton foundation that there should be investigations into many of the business dealings with the Clintons. So, no, Joe, I don't buy that there was an outrage around what Clinton, uh, both Clintons did when it came to Russia. Well, and other I, I, no, I, no, I, I, right? Yeah, you're yeah, you're both thing. right. You're right that yeah. you said there should be, mm -hmm. but you were a vast minority of, of journalism. Mm. You, most people were like, yeah, I'll let that go. And then right. as soon as there's a meeting, a, a meeting between Trump's son, but who's a businessman, and, and a kind of lawyer, things. and this is the collusion that you want to investigate. Can I just put a number around the outrage, just for a second, just yeah. on, on two, two issues that matter to the American people. 353 minutes was dedicated between May 17th and June 20th to Russia on the major evening news networks. Now, how much was to tax reform, something everybody was voting on or at least is concerned about? Less than one minute combined. Yep. That's all Airball. you need to know. Airball. All right. Well, we're not done yet. A lot more <laughs> ahead all. on the Trump Jr. news and the media coverage of it today, right after this break.
the breeze float straight out of our lids. Them, they got boo bodies, hard rock Brooklyn kids. Us floor rush when they DJ do my classics. As Eric alluded to in our last block, Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff, the ranking member of the House Intel Committee, delivered a sharp statement about the Trump Jr. news just a short time ago. We'll want everyone connected with this meeting to come in. We'll want any documents uh, that they may have. Um, you know, plainly, as we saw the constantly evolving uh, stories from the president's son, uh, we cannot rely on any public representations that are made by the family about their contacts with the Russians. We have now seen a very demonstrable pattern of uh, obfuscation uh, and dissembling about these meetings. Okay, Eric, we see Adam shift there. Uh, really using some $5 words uh, and using the term pattern, uh, which I think was very intentional from him as well. This type of reaction from the Dems, you obviously think does not serve their purpose. Why? They're, what is it exactly they're claiming? There's no claim of uh, illegality on anything that happened. This sort of collusion that they're kind of snooping around the edges for is, is far less pungent than the collusion that Hillary Clinton campaign had with, as I mentioned, Podesta, and I mentioned Bill Clinton doing speeches, all of a sudden campaign coffers being filled. I'm sorry, not even campaign coffers. That's not accurate. Clinton Foundation. But what about this one? What about the Russian dossier that the Clinton Foundation got their hands on? Someone, including, I think John McCain had it as well, prior to it getting leaked. It ended up being all false, all uh, foreign put together. Christopher Steele was a British national who put the information together, allegedly. And this, if you want to talk about collusion, collusion was, was far more pungent on the left than it was anything to do with Trump. As far as I'm reading. Okay, Jeff, let me ask you this. Uh, we can definitely have that conversation that Eric is talking about. Mm -hmm. We all remember the Clinton days. Everything was a right-wing conspiracy. But at right. some point, that narrative also got stale. At some point, aren't we going to have to look at actually what the Trump administration is doing? Absolutely. I mean, yes, we can go back uh, and, and look at what the Clintons did or, uh, for, you know, on and on. But, yes, I agree with you. At some point, we just have to be in the present moment, moment and move forward and focus on what's happening happening now, I, I agree. Kat? I just don't understand why we're talking about the Clintons right now. I think that, yeah, they've gotten away with a lot. I think that they're the center of a lot of corruption, but I don't understand how anybody could look at these emails and not be at least bothered and not say that he clearly made the wrong choice in this instance by yeah. taking that meeting. I, I will go back to what, what Eric was saying, though. I, I, get, I get your frustration because uh, it does seem that, that uh, the media hasn't always uh, played fair and that uh, there's been more focus on some of these small issues that have happened during the early months of the Trump administration than all those years of the uh, I, the I think that that's I, true, but what I'm trying to do is pay or play it fair now. You know what they can't do? The Russians can't go and send uh, this lawyer over and, and meet with uh, Trump Jr. and say, you know, here's a, here's a check for $5 million. Mm -hmm. Stick that in the campaign coffers. They can't right. do that. So you're but actually, that's, that's actually a that, really good point, yeah, Eric, because some people are talking about the campaign finance yeah. law, right? Now, my first, we were talking to the brain room earlier before the show, and I was talking to him like, well, What's the thing of value, right, that, that, that we're talking about here? And that's what we can't get clear on. So, Joe, when we go deeper into this analysis, I'm going to tell you what I see. Tell me where if I'm wrong. All right. We talk about, uh, we hear Adam Schiff talking about a pattern. Obviously, if you're the Democratic Party, you are still very upset that Donald Trump is our president. You want to bring him down. You want to resist at all costs. Mm -hmm. So you are thirsty, if you will, for some smoking gun that will allow you to do that. Okay. But taking every opportunity to make it uh, a, a said smoking gun, I think, undermines that agenda tremendously. And I think it does a disservice to uh, an overarching goal of the mm -hmm. takedown of the Trump presidency. Hyperbole is the only word that comes to mind when I think of Democratic leaders in terms of their reaction. Mm -hmm. Tim Kaine former vice presidential yes. candidate, senator from Virginia. I'm familiar. He called it, yeah, I'm sure you are, <laughs> uh, called it treasonous today, yeah. as did other Democratic lawmakers. We know that we're not at war for, for the treason requirement to be met. So. Right. So Not with Russia, anyway. When you overreact like this, yeah. you bring up impeachment, you bring up treason, mm -hmm. I would ask any Democrat to tell me three points of their platform right now. What will you do mm. for the American people to make their lives better? Besides, Trump is a bad guy, Look Russia's involved guy. in our elections, and I don't know, Samantha Bee's great. Look, like, what else do you have? What are you running on in 2018 and 2020 that people care about? So, so if money is the hook, mm -hmm. is the value, do you, do you not or think when, when Hillary right. Clinton is the, the, um, um, the Secretary of State in the State Department, arranges the deal to sell the uranium, and all of a sudden Bill Clinton is given five 
hundred thousand dollars to do a speech in Russia? Do I not think that that's far more um, likely a collusion uh, accusation than than meeting with a lawyer who ends up, by the way, at that meeting, all three of their admission, I, I believe the uh, the guy who brokered that deal as well was there, said yeah, there was nothing there. So here's Story. the thing. Eric, Eric, Eric what, what, stories have changed a I lot, think though. that it's you are laying out a brilliant prosecution for the Clintons uh, for a very <laughs> variety of crimes and things, and that's great. But I don't think that they are mutually exclusive. Here's and my I question, think that's then. the point. Okay. Yeah. So let's say this is the end of this Donald Trump Jr. story. He let out all these, those emails for a reason. Where does it go from here? Mm -hmm. What legs does this story have 24, 48 hours from now? Because I've seen this movie before not with many. the big bombshell, and then I'm talking about something different on so Thursday. That's a good point. You can say that the media is overblowing it, but I also think that it's overblowing it to get out ahead of yourself and say, you know that there's nothing there when the investigation is still ongoing. And the oh, other I don't know that. what's wrong. I don't see anybody on the news saying, on hey, I don't know. How we, about that? We've been How about ten, let the investigation go? On this show, I don't know. I agree. Ten weeks on the show, and we continue to talk about this alleged Russian, uh, Trump Russian collusion. Illusion, and we have yet to see one piece. So you don't call this one, collusion? Of course not. You call it failed it collusion? It was a meeting for opposition research, which, which every murder. campaign in the world does, from double presidential double. all the way down to state and local politics. That's with what they foreign, do. They want, with foreign they governments want to on the that have information we will about one of our top of course, officials. What's one other example? Coming up, the U.S. and Iraq declaring victory against ISIS. Woo! War ravage muzzle. The new report claims ISIS's leader has been killed in Syria. Stay with us. Iraq and the United States declaring victory over ISIS in Mosul, but is it, this is what's left. Look at the scenes of a city in utter ruins after nearly nine months of savage house-to-house -house fighting. ISIS's loss in Mosul is a watershed moment in the battle against them, but it's a stark lesson in how much sacrifice will truly be needed to defeat them. Another piece of potential good news today. The respected Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported it has confirmed information that Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS, was killed in eastern Syria. The U.S. military, however, says it hasn't been able to independently confirm it. Also, a U.S. Army sergeant has been charged with seeking to provide classified military documents and training to ISIS. Eric Kang, an air traffic control specialist stationed in Hawaii, was arrested on Saturday following a year-long undercover investigation by the FBI. Now, we don't have a lot of time yep. to talk about it. There's a lot, a lot to unpack here. Okay. A couple of things. Al-Baghdadi may be dead. ISIS may be defeated in Mosul. Fallout is horrible. Yet we, we, clo we, we stopped another potential terrorist attack by a US, U.S. military member in Hawaii. What do you that part makes me uh, feel the best, Eric, this thwarted attempt here. And you know what I like about it? This is somebody that we had reason to have uh, suspicions around. We stayed on them. That's something we don't always do. We stayed on them the full year it took to get everything we needed to move forward. And we thwarted something that could have been disastrous. Yeah, and Kat, the, uh, our intel department's been taking a lot of heat lately. But here's one, where, here's one for the good guys. We yep. closed that loop before uh, we had another Nadal Hassan on our hands, killing, right, killing a bunch of people. Absolutely, and a lot of time they don't get the credit for doing the things that they do well. This is obviously a, a good news story, but man, I mean, this is never ending, it seems. Mm -hmm. ISIS, like our colleague Rob O'Neill always says, is like nailing jello to a wall, trying to stop ISIS. Really, they're everywhere. It's a very, very complicated thing, and it's good to be happy about victories like this, but there's still so much work to be done. Yeah, and Joe, Hopefully yeah, in yeah. The direction of becoming less involved in these sort of conflicts to begin with. Yeah, look at it. Look, I don't know if you can scroll through some of those pictures, uh, Joe. It's it's horrendous what, the way what Mosul looks like now in the aftermath of a victory. And there's still blasts going on as of this afternoon. There's 300 ISIS fighters there, and there's still fighting going on. But it's all but over. Let's face it. But to talk about uh, this person that was arrested in Hawaii, it's pretty unsettling the fact that he was in the military since mm -hmm. 2002. He served in South Korea, Iraq, Afghanistan. So this was somebody who probably came in. Obviously, ISIS wasn't around in 2002, but somehow was inspired, maybe online, and was trying to provide them information. But this reminds me a lot of Nadel Hassan in Fort Hood, a lone wolf actor right. that could right. have done some real damage. So kudos FBI. That was a Yeah, kudos the FBI. Good, the good guys win one. Good, yeah. good yeah. news all the way around. So what do you think of the, uh, what Kat points out, that if, if victory in Mosul or victory in against ISIS looks like this, 
What do, is it really a win? It is a win. I don't know what, what's the other option. What's the alternative? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what we what else we would do. And, and by the yeah. way, it, it's good that we're talking about this because very few cable news networks are talking about this. The bottom line is that President, um, excuse, excuse me, candidate Trump said he would knock the hell out of ISIS. Well, so far five months in, we're seeing some real results in Syria and Iraq. Remember, there's a ceasefire announced just but last that, that, week. That in, wasn't in new, Syria. though, right? I mean, we've been attacking uh, Mosul. I don't think. Uh, well, yes, we, we have. We, yeah, we've we dropped more. It, we lost it. We, yeah. And and uh, we, when I say we, the, the it seems the like the winds are more consistent. The U.S. dropped more bombs, bombs under Mattis. Uh, uh, on Mosul earlier this year than all of, say, 2015. So, so I'm going I'm to jump on board with Kat on this one. So, okay, so ISIS is, uh, quote, unquote, defeated. They're not all dead. They might just turn up something else in another place. And right? we need to take a look at ways that some of our efforts have caused more problems. I'm talking more specifically about Libya with regime changes. We This area is a big mess. So what are we going to do, just stay there forever, getting involved in every little conflict? I think that we need to look at it. Be happy about this, but look at big picture, what kind of role we want to play or not play in some of these foreign involvements. Well, the good news is at least uh, Iraqi forces are the ones that defeated them. Right. American boots weren't They stepped up. Right. So that's, that's right. well, We were talking about foreign well. policy as, as a larger whole just mm -hmm. now, so that's what I was referring on to. On a macro level. Kate. Yes. Final thought? No, I agree. Good to go. No, I'm glad no boots were on the ground, of course. All right, we'll leave it right there. there. Straight ahead, the U.S. successfully testing a critical anti-missile system and prepares to wallop North Korea with new sanctions back in a moment. Welcome back to the Fox News Specialists. Our specialists today are Joe Concha and Jeff Kutorba. Let's continue the conversation. With North Korea crisis at a boiling point, the U.S. military scoring a major achievement today. A test of its bad anti-missile system successfully shot down an intermediate-range ballistic missile similar to North Korea's. The Wall Street Journal also reporting today that the U.S. is preparing unilateral new sanctions against more Chinese companies that help fund North Korea's weapons programs. This is a switch from the past. We used to try to provide concessions to the Chinese. Now, sanctions. What do you think about it, Eric? I think that's a good start. It's a, mm. a, a continuation of what we've already started. The FAD missile system is important because... Uh, <clears throat> Because you don't want to get hit by North a missile. Korean, no, yeah. Yeah, here's the problem. <laughs> South Korean new president says he doesn't want it. Mm -hmm. Is he insane? I mean, let's put that system there. Let's put it, I don't know, put it in Japan as well and, and maybe on our West Coast because it's probably, they're probably uh, going to be headed uh, our way pretty soon. But the good news is it, it worked. Yeah. What, what, Ebony, your thoughts? Uh, yes, that's, I'm certainly glad that it worked as opposed to not working. Same. To be clear. We all agree. Uh, correct? We all agree. So I was talking to uh, Gordon Chang before the show and uh, specifically around what this relationship between China and Russia is starting to look like and the concerns that I think we all share around that. Uh, and, and Gordon's response was, you know what? That part we can't control. They do seem to be getting closer on, on many levels. But the coalition of India and Japan and the rest of, of the allies around it is really our best bet at, at defeating whatever North Korea has up their sleeve. So when we talk about the global coalition uh, to fight North Korea, maybe we need to lean in harder there and not put all our chips just on China. I love the name, Thad. Hmm. Well, there's that. My, my, my wife, I'm pretty sure, Georgetown dated a guy named Thad. That's the type of name of that sounds like a yuppie name. Georgetown, yeah. yeah. But remember uh, Star Wars and Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Anti-missile, huh? Yeah, something like that. Uh, but with Ronald Reagan back in the 80s, and, and he went ahead with the Strategic <laughs> Defense Initiative, it was called Star Wars, and that helped end the U.S. Cold War. Not because we had a decisive military victory, because we showed the Russians that we had a technology they didn't. They had to spend time. Didn't they had to spend money, to, resources. Didn't we fake it? It was, doesn't matter. It didn't really work. Did but, but, the, but we have a real <laughs> system here. And with North Korea, what are your options? Yeah. Militarily, you can't bomb them because that, the goodbye to South Korea are troops that are there, Japan. Mm -hmm. So you need something to create some leverage. This may be just the thing. Your thoughts? Well, I'm just uh, thinking back to uh, Happy Days in the Fonz. He had uh, a reputation for at least hitting somebody once. Yeah. So you have, to, you have to have done that. And uh, Eric, you were uh, recently talking about how it's been, what, seven or eight in administrations that have been dealing with North, North Korea. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of those was uh, George Bush. And he was the one who met, brought up the axis of evil that people ridiculed him for. And granted, Iraq has changed. It was Iran, Iraq, and North Korea. But he was one of the first presidents to really start talking about North Korea in a serious way. And I, I do think you have to have uh, some credibility that you're going to use a military option. You can't just use a threat. 
When my kid, when my son was in junior high, he was being bullied. And we went to the teachers, we went to the principal, talked to the parents, and this kid kept bullying my son, who was much smaller than my kid. And I told my son, I said, you know what? You've tried all the diplomatic options. You just need to hit him back. And he did. And that kid never, never bothered him again. Like, so he was you, never bullied you, again. But either. that kid probably doesn't have a bunch of nuclear weapons. <laughs> and do you, think, do you think that the 59 tomahawks that Donald Trump sent into Syria and that one what, Moab. six ton Moab that he dropped on Afghanistan, is that, is that the, the bully well, getting punched in the face? Well, and now we're talking about a ceasefire in Syria. So, yeah, I think, I, I think it lends credibility where... Uh, not to keep going back to the Obama administration, but he would keep drawing a red line and a red line, and it was it was it never you know held up. So, yeah, right. No, that's so true. That's accurate. You have to have some credibility. You have to back I, I, up your threats. But I think that's the key in, in how far are we willing to go? Because I think what's not helpful because there are men and women really out there being sacrificed uh, around these promises that we are making. So I'm all about uh, you know I don't like relying our national security plan on what hoping what North Korea won't do because I don't put anything past Kim Jong Un. Uh, so I'm, I'm okay with that. But we need to just make sure that we're all on board with that. We're being legitimate to your point, right. Jeffrey, right. Uh, when we we speak that. That way. Kim right. Jong-un is unstable, Correct. but he's a, lot, he's a lot of fun to draw as a cartoonist. <laughs> <laughs> well, North Korea is reveling in its successful ICBM missile test. Kim Jong-un leading a big celebration today to commemorate it, featuring dancing, pop music, and plenty of thunderous applause for the so-called young general. It's very fancy. This is, this is a good demonstration of what he wants. He wants to be loved. He needs to be adored. He... It, so much of it is about this. He can't. He's very, very unpredictable when someone goes against him, though, which is why you do need to be careful. Mm -hmm. I, I really hesitate to even think about a military well, option. I, I don't really, really do. But what, but what I mean, else? We're, I, I we're talking really about dead Americans. I, I, we're talking know, about but dead we're Americans. We're talking about dead Americans either way, Kat, and I think that's the issue. We we're may about be dead talking Americans about dead Americans either way. What, so we just keep sending go, Dennis Rodman to talk to him? Yeah, no, that's totally what we're proposing. No, it's obviously not what I'm proposing. I think hitting on China is great. I like the way that President Trump is handling this. I'm now. so over if, that. I'm so. I'm gonna tell you why I'm over that. You want to bother me right now, Ebony? What do you want? I'm gonna tell you why I'm over the China answer because we have tried it. We have tried it. We've done the sanctions. We've done the sanctions, and we're not really getting anywhere. And again, I am not prepared to I value those American lives just like you do cat and I am not prepared to sit back and hope and pray uh, around what he won't do that is just not reasonable Kim Jong-un is unstable but I would hope that at least he understands that the <laughs> second he actually launches a missile whether it be at us Japan South Korea that guarantees you the we, don't know, we don't know we don't know what he understands but we don't know what he understands, understands. anything he, when he's I, celebrating a missile right. that could kill 10 yeah. With million people in I, one shot. I guess you, the, me, you lost me, Joe, when you listen, said, I hope he understands. Even, yeah, even, right. no even sociopaths no have a sense of self-preservation. That's right. So you're right. saying that okay. somebody who would poison They have a sense own. of self-preservation. Self he knows if he went out dressed, it would be suicide for himself. Anything, I don't think well, that. I think he's only concerned about himself. Why are you trying to make it look like I'm pro-Kim Jong-un? I'm not saying <laughs> that if, if we get involved militarily, there's going to be a lot of dead Americans. And I have anti-dead Americans, as I hope everybody out there watching is. All right, coming up. Americans huge partisan divisions on how they view everything from the news media to higher education what a stunning new survey has revealed next been waiting so long to be where I'm going in the sunshine of your life A new Pew study shows that there's a huge partisan divide between Republicans and Democrats of their major worldviews. That is shocking, uh, including in this, <laughs> in this country, the survey covering everything from labor unions to churches, along with news media and its impact on society. Now, 44 percent of Democrats believe that news media has had a positive effect on the way things are going in this country, while only 10 percent of Republicans feel that same way. Eric Bowling, uh, no surprise, obviously, given the coverage uh, so far of President Trump. They're Republicans, only a 10 percent of thinking that's positive. It's amazing that only 44 percent of, of uh, Democrats think so. Well, maybe you they remember. Uh, no, I think they're thinking back to pre-November. Yeah. When... <laughs> think about how, how left-leaning skewed the media is. And Joe, you're, you're media analyst. You can weigh in on this. But 90 percent of donations and something like 90 percent in that, that Harvard study was anti-Trump and, and left-leaning. Yeah. Now, this uh, surprised me that 44 percent is so low. 90s are popular, yeah. and including 93 percent of coverage of the Trump administration on CNN and NBC mm -hmm. has been negative towards the administration. Think about that. 
seven out of 100 stories that you see on there can only be deemed as not negative on those networks. But I, I had some fun. I looked this up during the break. Uh, we you read in your intro, mm -hmm. polls show sharp partisan divide, yes. right? You could find 100 stories on this on other things, like polls show sharp partisan divide on Obama's historical legacy. Polls show sharp partisan divide in confidence in Trump's deal making. Polls show par sharp partisan divide on Supreme Court vacancy. Almost as if the I think that we're split as a country. I think that you're right. You guys are shocked. Another interesting one that was the difference in the value of college education. Republicans had a little bit less, thought it was a little less valuable, and it was down from a previous poll. And I, that doesn't surprise me it's if you look at what's there. happening yeah. on college campuses it's shut down something, free I speech. something right something i report on all the time is it's being shut down free speech because people who are mm -hmm. almost almost always liberals wanting to shut down the speech mm -hmm. of conservatives and then running away and demanding a room full of puppies and coloring books i've had a lot of tough days in my life and i've never had a safe space puppies and coloring books and the value as valuable as a degree is if you leave those four years needing that to cope as a human then then you're in trouble as a grown-up. So I completely understand that. My brother runs a contracting school in Patterson, New Jersey, very poor area of New Jersey, right? Because college education now is so through the roof. By the time my kids that are three and one mm -hmm. get to Georgetown, my parent, where, where my uh, wife went, or Maryland, where I went, I mean, we're talking three, four hundred thousand dollars just to send them there. That's true. What, what, but you know what? Let me let me say this real quick, Jeff. I, I really don't appreciate that that colleges have gotten such a bad rap. And I agree with you, Kat, what's going on, on these campuses with the shutting down of free speech is a problem. But I know for me, uh, just my background, where I come from, college was the, the great equalizer. That was my opportunity uh, to get uh, on a trajectory that afforded me out of poverty, generational poverty, is which I come from. So I think it's important to not just give up uh, on our education systems, our higher uh, spaces of learning, and really challenge them to do better. Right. I would hope this would motivate the schools to do better yes. rather than people not go to school. R real quick, what's heartbreaking about this uh, uh, study uh, is that you know, I, w I come from the middle of America in Nebraska where I work at a newspaper with a lot of hard-working journalists people who are friends of mine for years I do not know their political leanings and we cover not just national international stories we cover local state issues which are highly important and it's frustrating that these people who are working so hard to bring the news uh, are, are thrown in with this this bigger mm -hmm. umbrella of the media. I agree with that. Local news coverage is still great. Yeah. Foreign correspondents are still that's great. Where people live. That's That's yeah. right. It's, they're affecting, it's affecting their daily lives. It's the political media where there's yeah, a big problem. A and one. people that or are supposed to be objective. Or yes. when they get promoted to the national level and, and then all of a sudden well, they realize they that you, go, you pick a side and you become more popular with your side. Well, right. And read the Twitter feeds of reporters that are supposed to be objective and you'll be mm -hmm. horrified compared to what they're actually presenting. I mean, that, that has yeah. been very revealing. Twitter and, feeds and of objective reporters. And there's a lot of ignorance about what journalism is. I, I would love for there to be a required journalism 101 class in every high school in America. Yeah, if you don't Just pick to, a, if you don't pick a side, it borders on abuse on the internet. <laughs> and actually, maybe yeah, it, is abuse some of it. Oh yeah, yeah. let's that talk about I the get. rising number of independents in, in this mm -hmm. country. That the, this research study didn't which, even. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, which I am one. As am I. <laughs> as am I. Well, there we go. Somebody's out number. Not me. So <laughs> when we return, <laughs> not never. We'll start go back with our specialist Joe Concha and Jeff Cortoba, including a special surprise from Jeff. Don't go away. All right, time to circle back with our specialist, Joe Concha and Jeff Koterba. Now, Jeff has a couple of cartoons he wants to show us. Go for it, brother. Well, uh, I whipped a little something up for, for each of you. Ooh. You can pass these, oh, pass these down. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. I love it. I love for this. Ebony. Look at that. All the best from Jeff even got the, my eye so color perfectly <laughs> I have green now, eyes. Now, Jeff, I have a minute to ask you about this. I, I looked at uh, some of the cartoons that you had sent. I was looking for a partisan divide in your cartoons. There is none. I really couldn't see one. Thank you. I'm a passionate centrist. And I pride myself on that. <laughs> and I say passionate. Congratulations. Thank Jennifer. you. Because uh, too often people think when you're in the middle that, oh, you're, you know, you're on, sitting on the fence. No, I feel very passionately about being in the center. And you're syndicated. Uh, how many? How many 850 days? newspapers Whoa. with uh, Kegel uh, around the world. Fantastic. Who's Congratulations. Who's the most fun to draw? Uh, I have to say Donald, Donald Trump, Trump because of his hair. I'm sorry, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so many colors you can use. <laughs> that is a couple of All right, Joe, uh, you, you've, you've been playing around with some stuff too? 
You could say that, yeah. I'm 46 years old, I gotta admit that. But I still collect sports jerseys, but not just any sports jersey. I actually collect sports jerseys of fictitious sports athletes that stop men like you on the street. For instance, Vince Vaughn. I have Peter LaFleur, the captain's jersey wow. from Average Joe's Dodgeball for, for you younger folks here. Great uh, movie, by the way. A tremendous, right? Academy Award uh, should have been. <laughs> and this should have been Academy Award as well. I own I the Bobby Boucher <laughs> Bourbon Bowl <laughs> Water Boy <laughs> number nine. And I guess I look a little like Adam as well. I can see that. Yeah, yeah. So all good stuff. I, I got the, the Hanson brothers from the slap shot. You got the eye block going on. There. I have the eye block. I even have the Soviet jersey. What about Mighty, Mighty, Mighty Ducks? Any Mighty Ducks? And, oh, you know, I probably should have gone with that. The Emilio Estevez. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Coach now, I'm going to work on that one. That's a good idea. Thank you so much for that. It's actually a real team. So. It, oh, I know one. Yeah, their jerseys. From, uh, I was just going to say, um, Jamie Foxx's character from Any Given Sunday. Oh, yes. Willie Beeman. I'm working on Steeman. Willie Beeman. Willie Beeman. Absolutely. That'd be awesome. Yeah. So uh, that, that's <laughs> that's what I do. Oh, and uh, Jimmy Chitwood from... Uh, Hoosiers, of course. Very good. Yeah. Very good, guys. Thank no bowling I could find, however. I'm going to say thank you to our Fox News specialists, Joe Concha and Jeff Caterba. And we thank all of you for watching. Be sure to watch a very special live edition tonight. Fox News specialists, 11 p.m. Eastern. We're going to analyze Sean Hannity's very exclusive and very important interview with Donald Trump Jr. at 10 p.m. Make sure to follow us on social media at Specialist FNC on Twitter and Facebook. Remember, Fox News will never be the same. Special report coming up right now.